What's up, guys? We are back. Another week didn't go, you know, as perfect as I thought it was going to go. Uh, finish week two and three. Again, two in a second. Uh, just run down, go over the picks this week. We'll review a little bit last week. Uh, then I got an interesting DM about police brutality. Don't know if it's going to be a two-parter, one-parter. You know, I'm actually not even sure what I'm going to say. I'm just going to start talking at the end. But, you know, different things I experienced. But um, first, again, the last week. Went two and three. Moved up in the standings from 49th to 41st. Um, you know, still not happy with myself, you know, but it is a tough year. You know, I was, I was looking last year where we were at. Um, I believe through four weeks last year, I had 15 points um, and I was in ninth place. So I was 15 and five at this point of the year last year. Um, I, I, I think first first place in our league right now in our pool, I think has 15 and a half points. You know what I mean? So it just shows how, how crazy, you know, the entire thing is. Um, and, and a lot of people are having difficulty picking games or COVID and the other stuff, um, you know, but it is what it is. So get into the picks for this week. So to start, the guy that ran the pool, runs the pool for the league, Patriots-Denver game removed. Buffalo-Tennessee uh, game is also removed from the pool. Um, we really liked Buffalo. I, I like the line. Um, I like how Tennessee, you know, hasn't really been playing, which I, I think is more of an advantage for Buffalo. Uh, but also like the Steelers last week versus Tennessee. I'm just not as high in Tennessee as it seems like these Vegas lines are. Uh, but since it's removed, those two games are off. I did not take any of them. So our first pick, we know our first pick. Take, take, take it every week. We're fading the worst team in the league. Been playing great for us. The Jets are so bad. Um, they're rolling out a new quarterback in Joe Flacco this week, and they get the Cardinals. You know, I was really hoping the line wasn't going to be high, uh, higher than seven, and it is seven, so... You know, I don't have any choice if it's 9 or 10 or whatever. I'd have to take it, but we're taking it. Arizona minus 7 is the first pick. Fading the worst team in the league. Seems like the most comfortable pick I make every single week is that one. Um, so getting to my other picks. You know, so last week I picked the Bears. Replacement for the Steelers um, over the Titans. Um, and I was in between the Bears, which lost, the, the Dolphins, which lost, and then the Browns versus Cowboys, which won. Didn't know which, which of the three. To go with when with the Bears, you know, I'm not mad with the decision. I know why I made it. You know, it's it's because the Colts are not that high in my rankings. Um, and you know, looking at the lines this week, I, I thought I was a little shocked when I saw that the the Colts again were favored, and they're playing the Browns. You know, the Browns are kind of a sketchier team, especially when you play Baltimore. I think they played Baltimore week one and got blown out, right? So it, it's so hard to recover from that, you know, because everybody has that stigma in your head, and you're the Browns. Um, but the spread being one, I thought it was going to be Browns minus two, but then it's two and a half. I was hoping it would be like Browns minus three or higher. And I see the Browns getting points. Granted, they're plus one and a half, but, you know, we saw a tie a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Anything's possible here. Or last night's game was a one-point game. I'll take one and a half. You know, I think the wrong team is favored, and I actually really like this line a lot. Um, another one, which is another interesting line that confused me a little bit um, that I like, is the Texans. Yes, the Texans are 0-4. Uh, remember, everybody loved the Texans last week against the Vikings. You know they weren't terrible, you know, but the Vikings were also zero and three. Like there was, it was that was a dog fight. That was two teams like like battling it out. This and that. They were playing the Jaguars, okay, at home. They just lost to the Bengals and the Dolphins. The Jaguars did. Okay, Bill O'Brien got fired earlier this week. It seems like J.J. Watt called him out in practice recently and questioned his coach. It seems like that the players are finally free, in my mind. You know, we'll see how it comes out. But, again, a line that I was hoping wouldn't be greater than a touchdown. And it is six. Six? Come on. I thought that one was great. And, and Texans are at home. Like, I'll, I'll take that every which way of the week you want to give it to me. 100% I'll take it. Um, Texans minus six. I, I love that pick, you know. Then for the third pick, the last pick I make, I, I, I didn't know what to do. There, there was a few games I kind of liked. I, first instinct was take the Giants plus nine and a half. You know, thinking about it, it's like, are the Cowboys really going to come out flat again? You know, the, Gi the Giants had that week last week against the Rams where, where they came out, they, they slowed the game way down, took time off the clock, made these long drives, everything, you know. Trying to eat up the clock and stuff. They lost, but they covered because it was just such a slow, you know, scoring game and, and slow moving game. You know, but then I thought about it. I was like, are the Rams really going to do that two weeks in a row? You know, I, I was thinking about the Giants, how the Giants played. I was like, wait a minute, but the Rams. Now they're playing a team with a new quarterback. Kyle Allen started for the Washington. Uh, the spread's seven. 
Why isn't it? I, I'm not a huge guy of taking a ton of favorites, especially heavy favorites. So maybe laying minus six, laying minus seven as two of my three picks. It's not something I love doing. I took the Rams last week and it killed me because the Giants slowed my least confident pick, but the pick that seems like it makes the most sense to me is the Rams minus seven this week versus Washington. The, the Rams have kind of come out flat after after playing great to start the year. And are they really going to do it again this week against Washington? You know, I don't think so. I think that's a great pick. Um, and then last but not least, our random number generator came up with the number six. Out of 30 and six represented the underdog in the third game listed, which was Raiders plus 12 and a half versus Kansas City. Raiders are such a weird team. Uh <laughs> You know, uh, like I said, I, I think that win versus Saints is kind of fraudulent because the Saints aren't really that good. Um, the Saints are also such a weird team as well. Um, you know, but I don't mind taking that as my free pick. I'd rather be getting the points than laying the points. I'd rather not be in the game, but uh, if I'm getting the points, 12 and a half is a fuck ton of points. And uh, Derek Carr and the whole offense, if they're down 17 late, like they're trying to score a touchdown late. Like they're not just packing it in. Um. Do I think the Raiders have a chance to win? No. Will they be down 7 nothing like, immediately? Probably. Um, it's just scary that Bill Belichick, like, shut down Kansas City last week, so you're hoping they're not just on a fuck you tour this week, you know? Um, so that's, that's my only fear. Uh, but then to the recap the picks, so we have the Cardinals minus 7. That is our fade play. That is automatic, fading the worst team in the league. The random number generator is the Raiders plus 12.5. Then I get the Browns plus 1.5. Texans minus 6. And Rams minus seven. That rounds up to five. I need a fucking four in one week, guys. All right, one sec. All right, so now the uh, for the second part. So, you know, someone asked me, like, well, hey, what's your thoughts on police brutality? You know, I thought that was a great question. And it, it's it's like a deep, deep answer, I guess I would say. Um, you know, someone like me, I never thought, you know, that you could get around, like, it seems like weird to think about now, you know, I was a teenager at the time, and, you know, it wasn't a, a, a good idea, obviously, to do what I was doing, but I was in such a, like, white bubble, that I didn't even, like, think it was a possibility you can get arrested, or, or stuff like that, or how legal or, or things were, um, but not, that doesn't really have anything to do with a lot of stuff, other than, like, my growth as a human, you know, um, you know, I was different than Mike, where, you know, when I was a kid, I was watching, you know, Kings of Comedy, um, you know, and I, I liked rap music, all of my friends like rock music, no one really liked black comedians, no one, you know, but I heard in the songs or in the, you know, I heard people talk about police brutality, but always kind of like, probably a lot of people do, is kind of like brush it off, or a lot of stuff in the songs, or, or some stuff in the comedy you don't relate to, because it's not your life, you know, um, then, while I was selling, you know, my parents obviously didn't know, so I'd have a job at the same time as well, especially in college. Um, so we used to work at this, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say what the place is, but it was kind of this blue-collar area job. Not a lot of people worked at it, but, you know, some manual labor stuff you had to do. But you're eating coffee and donuts in the morning, and then at lunchtime we're eating lunch, we're all sitting together. One of the guys there was a retired cop. Um, and I'm pretty sure he got injured on the job, so he had to retire. So he was there kind of like part-time. Uh, but we'd always tell all these stories. You know, in, in, you know, they're telling stories of just beating the shit out of Puerto Rican people and Spanish people, black people, and, like, laughing about it. And I, I never really understood why it was funny. Um, or it seemed like some of the stories they, like, said were, like, highly illegal or, or like, on the bridge of legality. Um, you know, or just, just, like, the mindset of some of the people that he was working with, like, wanting to hurt or injure people and it really was like that's kind of weird but it's like maybe it's just a crazy old guy you know what I mean it's like I know that people that are cops like they aren't like this guy but it's like wait a minute this guy was a cop in the city you know in the city of Springfield you know the people that I know that are cops are cops in East Long Meadow you know or, or cops that are in the uh, in Long Meadow in the town over that are we don't really have like low income people doing anything violent or anything like that in general let alone really have any a lot of people of color that live in our communities, you know. So it's, it's different views of the cops. Um, also, you know, the 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 demographic of the cops or f people that lived in our towns and different stuff. So like it seemed like the stories he told were like kind of crazy, 
you know, he also was telling stories from, you know, the late nineties and, you know, we were at the time, I don't know, it was like 2008, 2009. So then in your mind, you're like, oh yeah, those are the nineties. Like that stuff like that doesn't happen now. These are just old stories, you know, but he would bring in, you know, other cops would visit us at work and be like, oh, there's Billy. I'm like, Billy from the story where, wait, that's the, it's like, that seems like weird that like that's, that cop actually is a real person. He's still working. Seems like a really questionable story I heard, you know what I mean? Or stuff like that. But it, it caught, I started to kind of line up with different stuff I heard comedians say or, you know, in these rap songs. But it, again, it was the 90s. We're not in the 90s. We're in the aughts going to the teens. Like, I didn't think stuff like that really happened all that often or as much as he said, you know, but the, literally targeting them, you know, like stuff hanging from your mirror. That's what they looked for. If they saw that, they can immediately pull you over. There's there's a reason. There's looking for a reason to pull you over. They're going to pull your car. They're going to search you. And it's like stuff that they wanted to do. You know, or he told a story about he was driving around and, and the guy that was with him in the car. They, they found two people having sex, teenagers, in an alleyway. And they pull up the cop car. No lights on. And phew, flip the lights on. It's the guy that he's with in the car, his daughter. White, of course, with a black guy. And he pulled his gun out, like, ready to, and the, my, the guy that worked with me had to tell him, no, 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 and, like, put it away and calmed it down, and obviously no, nothing violent happened, but, like, even that, like, when he told that story, and it's still with me, it's like, that is an insane story. Like, that, that is, th- there's a ton of them, whatever, it's not the point of the story. So then I'm incarcerated, locked up, you know, I, I think I said this on Kirk's show, you know, the first thing my lawyer said to me was, like, case is fucked. They have a shit ton of evidence. They have like witnesses or people wanting to cooperate against you. Uh, so you're, you're pretty much fucked here. Uh, he's like, but you have something really good going for you. And like, hopefully we can get under five years, uh, because of it. And I was like, all right, great. What is it? He's like, you're white. And like, I laughed. And then he was like, no, 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 I'm serious. It's like, if you're Hispanic or black, you know, with these charges, you're probably going to get five, probably like five, seven years. But it was like, maybe we can get you, you know, under five here. Um, de- definitely at least three, but you're know, trying to be between three and five here. And it's just like, wait, what the fuck? He was serious, you know? And, and then even just being locked up, then hearing stories that a lot of other people had to deal with, or, you know, um, people have their paperwork with them. So then like you see their mugshot and they're like beat to shit or different stuff. And, and it, it says that they did this or did that, or, you know, white people that had just had crimes that, you know, th- this is even police brutality. This is just like the whole, how the whole system works. And I'm starting to learn how the whole system works. You know, white people with crimes against children or, or beating their wives or, or stuff like that just have less time than, you know, Spanish people or whatever, black people that are just selling drugs or beat their wives as well. You know what I mean? Or, or stupid stuff like that or, or armed robbery or or there's different people that are on probation and w- once they get off of probation, or no, no, not off, well, they're still on probation, they commit crimes, so then violating probation by robbing a store or uh, people do craziest stuff on parole and probation. And, you know, when you violate it as a white guy versus a black guy, it's different. It, it's different. And like I said, I worked in intake, you know, some people are more willing to, to explain their story or, you know, seven years for this, facing 20 years for that, this, you know, I mean, different, different charges. Or, or things that are going on, or stuff that happened when they were a teen, and it really starts to build in my head, you know, I, that maybe some of the stuff I heard from these comedians were true, maybe the stuff that I heard when I was working at this blue-collar job, you know, with the retired cop, that was true, or is it, like, I, I didn't, I still didn't know, you know, then I got out, once you get out, uh, I'll talk about getting out another day, but you know, the DMV suspend your license. Like you were committing a crime while driving a car, your license, a well, majority of people that are arrested, they lose their license. So I'm getting driven around by other people, maybe for a little over a year, the first year I'm out. So my like interaction rate with police is down, you know, I'm not really seeing police or anything like that. So it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. Um, you know, my number one goal was staying out of trouble. Always want to stay out of trouble. Um, and, and now it's even more so because then once I did get a license and once I did start having run in with police, I've had a ton of times, you know, getting pulled over. Oh, there's no blinker on or your headlights are out, taillights out, you know, before I was locked up. And then once you get locked up and, and then a simple thing as a light being out or, or you did an illegal U-turn on, on a road that you didn't know was a U-turn or something like that. 
this turns into like a full investigation by the police of just like harassing you, asking me a 10,000 questions. Um, is there drugs in the car? Where, where am I coming from? What's going on? It's, it's like, what do you mean? Did my taillights out? I'm sorry about that. I'll, I'll get it fixed. Like, I just want to be on my way. Like, my apologies or, or you know, I, I don't even know. Different, just simple ass things. And it and it's, turns into like, where I came from, have I been drinking, what's going on, it's like, it's, it's like, it's 11 in the morning, what do you mean have I been drinking, no, you know what I mean, the most recent time I was pulled over, um, it was in New Hampshire, uh, just literally just crossed, crossed the border from Mass to New Hampshire, you know, the, the cop pulls me over uh, for talking on the phone, I didn't know that was illegal in, in New Hampshire, I'm not from around there, um, for those of you who don't know New Hampshire, don't, their state cops are terrible. They're, they are awful. Connecticut and New Hampshire are so strict. Anyway, the guy, it, it's a long story. I'm not going to tell the whole story because I was pulled over for like over an hour because the guy thought I had a gun in the car. I then said I didn't have a gun in the car. He also couldn't search my car. No, thank you. Um, he accused me then of asking if I was coming from the bar or not. Mind you, I was going to Vermont. I was going to some bachelor party. It was like 4.30 or 5 o'clock. I literally had just gotten out of work. I was like, no, I got out of work, and I'm driving to Vermont. Like, why would I? Like, that sounds like a terrible idea to go to the bar before driving three hours. I don't know about you guys. That just seems awful to me. He made me get out. I had to do a sobriety test. Um, passed the sobriety test because I was sober. It was 4.30 in the afternoon. Got back in the car. Um, you know, then he accused me of having weed in the car after the other two things had failed, you know, and, and the whole time I was just trying to keep calm because I'm not doing anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. You know what I mean? Um, I, I tried to remain calm the whole time as I'm being accused of all this other stuff and the guy's threatening me and all this other stuff. You know, I was pulled over for like an hour, hour and a half just to be let go. You know, I, I've been pulled over. I, I can't even give you the reasonings, man. I, I pulled over one time I was holding... McDonald french fries out the window, but I, that was in front of my mirror, like my driver's side mirror over here, just trying to cool them down on my way to the gym, just wanted to get a quick, you know, some calories in right before the gym, just took some pre-workout, I was on the highway, cop pulls me over, I'm pulled over for over an hour again, he wants to search my car, is there drugs in the cars and that, it's like, sir, you pulled me over because I was holding something out the window, which was french fries that were too hot, you know what I mean, and it, it starts to get into my head, what if I was black? You know what I mean? What if I, like, how these things would go differently with situations? Because people don't care anything. As soon as they see the word felon, their eyes turn red. You know, let alone, you talk about job interviews another time, of people that have gotten a job, signed an offer letter, been on the thing. They, before they even run a background check, I let them know that something would pop up, you know, just as a heads up, to be honest with you, just laying it out here, this and that, made a mistake, boo, 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 boo. And then they come back and like, oh, we don't hire people like you. We don't want people like you. And you're like, damn, what the fuck? And you're like, all right, word. Like, you, you can lose me. Don't worry about that. You know, I mean, I'll go work somewhere else. But it's just like, you, you realize you're. St I'm starting to feel a small part of discrimination that probably people of color feel. Um, but that, that wasn't the question. The question was, pal, what do you feel about police brutality? You know, I just want to give a background on how my life has changed now. If I see a state cop, if I see a cop, if I see anyone anywhere, I am, my heart is racing. I am terrified for my life, uh, even when I'm doing absolutely nothing wrong. Um, you know, I, I took a city bike out or whatever, blue bike in Boston, and I had trouble getting it off. I don't know if anyone's ever used it with the app. You know, it tries to unlock. I couldn't get it to unlock. Finally got it to unlock. Spike riding around, Southie. Um, you know, just going on a nice ride back when I lived in Dorchester a couple years ago. And then I come back, and then I can't get the bike to to lock in again, right? Mind you, I had three policemen come over to me, harassing me, asking me if I'm stealing the bike, what am I doing, this and that, all, all because they, they've seen me struggling with the bike, they think I'm trying to steal it. This, I'm like, are you guys serious? And of course, they take my ID, run it, I'm a felon, and then it's, it's, it gets it goes from bad to worse. Now they don't believe a word you're saying, this or that, anything. It's like, oh my God, guys, I'm trying to rent a bike. Why would I steal a $2.50 bike? Can we use common sense? But... I'm at the point now where if I see police anywhere in person or anything, it, it's, I'm personally, I'm afraid of them. I don't know them, but I know what they're capable of, you know, and, and this goes more for state cops or, you know, a lot of the towns around, you know, the Boston area. Now, if, if we're deep in the South shore, 
you know, deep, if we're even in like Winchester or deep in the North Shore or all the way up even near like Amesbury or something or if you're in East Long Meadow where me and Mike grew up, it's different. You know, like I said, you're in a community that is policed by people that live in the community. And I think if you're down in North Carolina or Mississippi, Tennessee, anything like that, a lot of them, you live in a town with policemen that live in your town. Um, every interaction you've ever had with the policeman has been positive. So like you don't even like realize that there is negatives to it because you've never either never did anything wrong or never been put in a position where the cops could assume you've done something wrong, you know? And, and when you see if anyone doesn't live in Boston, I'm sorry, but you see people in Boston PD, Cambridge PD, Somerville PD, uh, Quincy, you, you know, all these towns that have cops that don't live there's Cambridge cops that don't live in Cambridge. Quincy cops that don't live in Quincy. And and mix that in at the same time with people of color and in there, they're they racist. It, and it, it, it's it's not like a question. It's more of just like a matter of a fact. You know, it, but the problem is that it, there's no system in there that, especially with the internet or the different stuff that's going on now, there's no system in place for checks and balances. You know, and I understand from the police's point of view why if you just insert the police, the, the checks and balances system, like, then I guess, like, someone could have a bad day at work and, and do something, like, accidentally, and then they would get fired right away. You know what I mean? Or, or it limits how they can do their job efficiently or this or that, or people don't understand the different stuff. But, you know, of course this is going to happen. I think it's crazy to think it's not going to happen. Is it going to happen in the 20s? Is it going to happen in 2030s or 2040s? I don't know. In my lifetime, it's going to happen. It's going to start happening more nationwide where literally it's something as simple as there's going to be a hearing if you do something wrong. You know what I mean? So these people that had a ton of different charges or different things going on and they, they never get checked. What do we have for time? 21 minutes. Eh, maybe I can't fit in one video. Um, you know, and, and there's going to be a, a mass firing all at once. But you can't get fired from Quincy PD and then go down to Providence and then be a cop in Providence and that no one even like checks your background in, in, in Quincy. You can't, we can't have a system like that. I think that's the problem. Um, you know, there's people that want to speak out or, or could speak out. You've heard them and, and, and there's troubles for them doing that. But then a majority, and I mean a majority of the, of the country is living in a town with very nice police officers. And that's where you hear people say, I have police officers that are nice. East Long Metal cops, they're nice. I, you know what I mean? A couple of them are a little, I don't like meaner. I don't say really meaner, but the, I'd say as a general, like they are good police department. But they live in town. They know the parts of town. They even know like if they see kids like on the trail or something like doing, like they could maybe picture back and see themselves doing that. You know, that now you have cops that from Central Mass driving into Boston. You know, what I mean? because the guys have used to live with someone like this. They, they have two apartments because they have to have a Boston residency or something for certain requirements. The guy barely stays in the Boston apartment. He's living in Central Mass. He's not from here. He doesn't know these people. You know what I mean? So he's seen people in Roxbury or, you know, he's seen people in the South End that he's never, <laughs> like, dealt with. He doesn't. He can't, like, picture back to him being a kid and doing stuff like that where it, it just seems like a strange idea. If I were to tell you, hey, for East Long Meadow or, or for the Duxbury police, Winchester police, we are going to get rid of all of the cops there and we are going to bring in all people of color that live in the inner city and they're going to police the, the areas around there. You know what I mean? They'd be disproportionately in different areas. They'd be doing, you know what I mean? Or, or they, they, they just wouldn't know the area and people wouldn't really feel as comfortable. There's all white police and Boston's not as bad. With the diversity in the cops, but a lot of times in the South or other stuff, it's just an all-white police force or, like, police in a community that they don't, you know what I mean? They're not from. And I think just a big change would come just from something as simple as having more people from your own community policing you. It seems, like, crazy, but it, 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 I, I've mentioned it in when I was on Kirk's show. You know what I mean? There's, there's these guards that are from the cities that are guards. They kind of understand, you know, they know how to deal with the troublemaker people. They know how to do this and that. There's the people from Greenfield, from the middle of shit nowhere, Massachusetts, that are driving an hour to work to to the facility, whatever. You know what I mean? And they don't, they've never, like, seen a person of color in their life. And they've only seen stuff on TV, and they try to reenact what, what something isn't, you know, which wasn't treating people like respect or even, like, knowing how things work. And, you know, I, I saw it so much, so much with the guards 
they already know in real life with police, it, it's similar how and how it works. You know what I mean? It, it's that guy that's white. He could be white and actually from Boston. You know what I mean? Grew, born and raised in Boston. Born and raised in Worcester. You know what I mean? But at least they know. They've seen people like that. Oh, that guy's strung out on this. Or that guy just needs help with this. Or, you know, you have to talk to someone a certain way. Or kind of understand where they're coming from. Their crazy end and this and that. You know what I mean? So, the police brutality thing is prevalent. I think that's definitely something that goes on. And I think there's a pushback on accountability because no one really understands what that is because a lot of the public don't understand what the day-to-day life is for a policeman, you know, and different stuff. And you can have one cop do one thing wrong and they're afraid they're going to lose their lives or like have the entire force be like thinned out. Um, But whenever this does happen, you know, when big police departments in general, now are going to be held accountable via, um, you know, a, a, a system where people are, are checks and balances and there's not a cop with 27 complaints, a cop with 13 complaints, a cop with 16 complaints, all in the, you know what I mean? When this first happens, all those people are going to get fired. They have to get fired. There has to be some kind of tracking system. You know what I mean? A child molester can't go to another town without people knowing. Even if someone was a felon, there's tracking systems for all this other stuff in our system. You know what I mean? If I go live in, in a different town, a different city, the, the police department will know there's a convicted felon living in your area, know this or that. A policeman can have wrongs against him, this and that, in Quincy, and then go down to Trumbull, Connecticut, and be a policeman. You know what I mean? It, there's no, the, the checks and balances system just isn't there, which then allows this to breed. Um, and like any other job, like the people that have been there the longest kind of run stuff. You know what I mean? And the people that have been there the longest, things were, were kind of bad, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s, more before the internet, before, you know, I, the younger generation more kind of respects other people, um, just in general, like random strangers, you know, let alone when the people open their mouths. But, you know, you're starting to see more of the different things that go on. You know, I, I don't even have to get into details, but just in general, simple reform would change so much just because it's not these outside people that are always policing. You know, there's a small percentage of outside people that are actually policing and there's people that are held accountable. You know what I mean? If, you know, I work in finance, people have gotten fired at work. It, it happens, you know, in any job you work at too, people have been fired from work. People don't just like, don't really get fired from being a policeman. It re- like rarely happens. You know what I mean? And it's less something like egregious happens or it's, it, it just seems like it's a us versus them. The, the police people are trying to protect themselves, you know, against the public, which then they, they just needs to come together. You know what I mean? And I think both sides can agree to, or I don't know if they actually, I don't know if they can agree to come together, but it, it needs to be a level of policing our communities need to happen hundred percent. And at the same time, you can't just have these policemen that are elder status and stuff get away with like egregious crimes. You know what I mean? Or just just beating people up that are in handcuffs, like, and think that that's funny. The guy that I worked with at the job thought it was funny, like beating people up that are in handcuffs and kicking them when they're down and all this. It's just stuff like that is not funny. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever been helpless or been like like they just, stuff like that is not funny. Um, but I I think that we can be a better nation, and I think a lot of people do agree with that. Um, but. Uh, you know, like I said, I was just going to talk for 20 minutes, so I got to end it. But, you know, my thoughts are that, you know, police brutality and the racism, it, it all starts with having people in power and different stuff for years and years and years. They do stuff wrong, and there's no accountability in, is set. And then the police over here are worried, hey, if we have accountability, that... You know, some people get fired for just having a bad day or doing, like, one small thing wrong. So there has to be a fine middle. But, like, where we're at now, 100%. There's police brutality everywhere, every day that we walk in this life. It's sad. It, it exists. But what a majority of people live in are towns that are policed by really nice policemen that are very nice people. But, unfortunately, the majority of the population lives in cities. And then in, in like those suburbs or little areas around the cities, which also in all those com- majority of those communities are not policed by people who live in the communities. So it's sad, man. Um, I don't know. If someone has, I don't even remember everything I just said. So someone has a question about something you can ask me. Um, but you know, I, I think it's pretty simple. It's pretty obvious. 
what do I think about changing all the police laws and all the other stuff, stuff that Kirk makes fun of? That's, that's talk for another day, but you know, it'd be different if people that weren't from your town or were from your area of the state started policing your town. You know, it would be different. It would be different if they're doing no knock raids and stuff in, in, in the rich neighborhoods in the white people neighborhoods, you know, I don't see no, no knock raids in the white neighborhoods. No, no, no. You know, I know white people in the rich neighborhoods have guns and post them on Facebook. Cops aren't going there with no knock raids. Nope. It's, it's a slippery stroke, but again, they're doing, I mean, video has to end, <laughs> sorry, but you know, people doing no knock raids, doing just stuff like that because they're scared. They don't, they're, they're approaching a situation with caution. They're not, they're not from this area. You know what I mean? They're not, they don't know what's, what's going on or different. There's no like need for excessive force or stuff like that in your town that you live in that my parents grew up in because the cops know the area. They know this town. They know that family. They know who they are. You know what I mean? They know different things about them. There's not... They, they know what this neighborhood's about. You know? The neighborhood I'm in is sketchy. That I live in right now. The one that, that Gary lives in, it's, it's sketchy. I don't know if the police in that area or in Waltham where Mike lives. or they Waltham, I don't know enough about Waltham cops. You know? But it, it, as you get more to the suburbs, I feel like the cops get nicer because they're from that community. And they're there to serve and protect and help the community grow. I think the current system we have, there's a ton of policemen that are in the cities just to be a macho policeman. And not to actually help and have the community grow. I don't know. I can keep going on forever. People need to be held accountable. But it's it's like what level of accountability and all of that is never actually talked about, never actually discussed. And people need to come up with what level of accountability is acceptable. Because I don't even know the answer to that. But... Right now, at your job, at your workplace, if people in power that have been at the job for 20, 30 years are doing stuff, you, you're just going to like kind of fall in line or be like, all right, it's okay. It's okay to do that. You know what I mean? Whatever they do in the break room that's questionable or whatever they do here or there, you know what I mean? You're just following the leader of the people in front of you. All right, guys. Have a good one. Good luck on the picks.